Hello, and welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I will be reviewing Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. This game was developed by Troika Games, and it was released in 2001. Before I move on with the review, I just want to say one thing. When I recorded footage for this review, I recorded it in the game's original resolution. I tried using the high-res patch. It works, and it's a good patch, but I don't like it. The game is too zoomed out, and the characters start looking like ants, so you will see the game's original resolution. And one more thing, there will be minor spoilers in this review. You have been warned. Let's get on to my review of Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. The story starts off with your character taking a trip on the IFS Zephyr, the first Zeppelin in the land of Arcanum. Everything's going well until the Zeppelin is attacked by two ogres and fighter planes. Unfortunately, the Zeppelin crashes near a town named Shrouded Hills. The only two survivors are you and an old gnome named Preston Radcliffe. Preston is almost dead, but before he dies, he gives you a ring and tells you to go find a boy. After that, you run into Virgil, and that's how Arcanum starts off. Why was the IFS Zephyr attacked? Who is this boy that you have to find? That's up to you to find out. Now, when you go through the story in Arcanum, you feel like you're going on a grand journey. There's not that many games out there that feel epic. And, in my opinion, Arcanum does feel like an epic game. This is a long game, so if you play Arcanum, be prepared to invest many hours in this game. Think about this. You have halflings, ogres, gnomes, dwarves, elves, orcs, and humans. Now, put them in the 19th century. You know what happened in the 19th century? The Industrial Revolution. Magic versus technology. Some embrace the new ways of technology. Some hate it and they prefer magic. And you're stuck in the middle of all this trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, you have a unique setting, but... You need more than that to help out the story in a role-playing game, especially a CRPG. You need choices, freedom, and dialogue. Arcanum does these things very well. It's not a perfect game. This game has many flaws and I will go into it, but one of the things that it does do well is role-playing. Let me explain. My main character was a dwarf. Dwarfs are good at technology. Right from the beginning, I could tell that the world was responding to my character. Magic users did not like me. They denied me service at some of their stores, even some inns. If I tried to go in and be a customer, they'd tell me to fuck off. If your character has low intelligence, then you will be treated like an idiot and you won't be able to do some quest. In one town, I ran into this mayor and he wanted me to talk to the citizens in order to help him out. But at the time, my intelligence was too low, so I was not able to help the mayor out because, frankly, I was too fucking stupid and I couldn't figure out the responses in order to convince the citizens to help out the mayor. If your character is beautiful, then it could help you recruit some companions. If your character has high perception, it not only helps you with ranged weapons, you are able to see more of the area you're in. The higher your perception, the more you can see. If your character is focusing on technology, then you're not able to use potions because they have no effect on you. Why do I bring these examples up? Arcanum is a role-playing game. It's a CRPG. Your choices and the type of character that you make matters. I know that this is different from my other reviews. I'm using a different structure, but this is for a reason. I want to let you know that the strongest thing about Arcanum is the role-playing. Now, to talk about the story. Did I enjoy it? Yes. It's an epic journey, and it reminds me of Fallout. Not that it's the same setting or anything like that. In Arcanum and Fallout, you start off with a simple quest, and you might think that it's the only thing you have to do. But, once you finish the simple quest, it turns into something much more complex. And, in Arcanum, once you're done finding this boy and giving him the ring, the story gets more complex, and once you figure out the main reason behind the Industrial Revolution in Arcanum, wow, that's all I have to say. 
Some of the stuff in this game reminds me of Fallout, and when you look at who worked on this game, it becomes obvious. Leonard Byarsky and Tim Kaine. Those were some of the people that worked on the original Fallout games and Arcanum. When you look at the world map, you travel it the same way that you do in Fallout. You pick an area to go to, you travel it, and you experience random encounters. So, this game definitely reminded me of Fallout. If you play Arcanum, take your time and explore. There are so many things to do and see in this game. I had a lot of fun doing the side quests, figuring out all the interesting characters in the backgrounds. One of my favorite side quests involves a person on an island with a story to tell. He tells you about him feuding with a family member a long time ago over magic versus technology. That's all I'm going to say about that. But as for the story, I really enjoyed the story. The companions, and yes, I forgot to mention, you do get companions in this game. They will follow you around, you can learn more about their backgrounds, and they'll help you fight. I like a certain amount of companions. I like Virgil, I like Gar, I like the dog, and some others. Virgil's background really intrigued me, and once I figured out his backstory, that was very interesting. Gar also has an interesting backstory. So, like I said before, I enjoyed the story, and I'm not telling you that much about the story for a reason. I want you to play the game. I think the dialogue is really good. You have different options when you talk to people, and sometimes you have to think before you talk. If you run into a character that likes busting your balls, don't be nice to him. You might have to bust his balls in order to get him to respect you. If you run into a character that's intimidating, try to outsmart him to scare him. This game makes you think before you act. If you annoy someone long enough, they will attack you. If you try talking to someone that's suspicious of you, they might attack you. And some of the situations in this game, they really test your morals. And even though it's a video game, you really think about it, whether it's good or bad or in the middle to do this, and what would you do in that situation. That's how good the dialogue is in this game. Now I'm going to show you one of the examples of dialogue in this game. And therefore, humans, when confronted with any situation, see it through the veil of their own mortality. Achieve, advance, perform. Humans are constantly driven by the shadow of their own death. This fear, unfortunately, clouds their judgment, deadens their sense of right and wrong. Humans act first, think later, and feel last of all. Necromancy, betrayal, ancient traditions, technology versus magic. Those are some of the things you'll encounter during your journey through Arcanum. The story's not perfect. Near the end of the game, there are some parts that annoyed me, some quests and obstacles that I didn't like. It's not the length, I don't mind a long game, but it's not a big deal because there are different ways to get out of the situation, but it just annoyed me. And another thing I don't like is that there aren't enough books. I wish that they put more books in the game and made them longer so I can explore the lore. It's a very interesting world, and I just wish that they put more books so I can read it. Now, let's talk more about gameplay. When you first start the game, you can choose between picking a character or creating a character. I recommend creating a character because this is one of the more detailed character creations in role-playing games. You have over 48 backgrounds to choose from. Backgrounds, they can hurt and help your character. For example, if you choose one of the backgrounds, you might get more dexterity but you might have to take away a point for perception. Things like that. And you have over eight races to choose from. You also have physical and mental stats. Strength, constitution, dexterity, beauty, intelligence, willpower, and charisma. So, like I said before, Arcanum gives you the freedom to create the type of character that you want in this game. Do you want to create a dwarf that's good at laying traps and shooting guns? Go ahead. Do you want to create a mage that's beautiful and charismatic at the same time? Go ahead. Do you want to create an orc that's ugly and stupid? Go ahead. You can create a lot of builds in this game. I've seen someone create a boxer build, and knowing me, that's pretty cool. When you play Arcanum, you can choose from magic or technological disciplines. My main character was a tech character, 
and there were a good amount to do. Herbology, chemistry, explosives, electric, gunsmithy, and more. So there's a wide variety of things to do with your character. But I have to say, if you plan on playing a tech character, it can be hard in the beginning. So if you want an easier start, play a magic character. But that's the beauty of Arcanum. There are tons of replayability with the type of characters you can make. So you can play a second, a third, a fourth time with different characters and have a unique experience each time. Now I've said a lot of good things about this game, but there are some major flaws that I have to address. Number one, the combat. The combat in this game is meh. It's bland. You have so much that you can do with your character, whether you play a magical character or a character that likes technology, but the combat almost ruins it. I mean, for some reason, they decided to go with this system where you can choose real-time, fast turn-based, or turn-based, and it makes no sense. Just focus on one. They should have focused on making the game turn-based instead of giving you the option to play in turn-based or real-time. They should have focused on turn-based. That was such a stupid decision. I don't know why they went through with it. The combat animations are bad. Fallout came out in 1997 and it has better combat animations than Arcanum. And Arcanum came out four years later. Another problem I have with the gameplay are the dungeons. The dungeons are uninspiring. You just go to point A, kill this, kill that, and just leave. They should have put puzzles or something interesting to make them unique. It's just a generic dungeon number one and generic dungeon number two and so on. It's a shame because everything else is so detailed but the dungeons are so fucking boring. Another thing I don't like about the game is that the combat is unbalanced. There were some points in the game where I was scratching my head. I was level 28 or level 30 and I would fight a character that was level 3 or 4 or 5. And I should be able to beat this character very easily. And most of the time I did. But some of them, they would be taking a lot of shots. More than they should because remember, they're level 3. And they would be able to eat through my bullets or take more than they should. So I think the combat is unbalanced. And I heard it was too, but that's what I experienced. Now, Arcanum is a flawed game. But it's a great role playing game. That's why I enjoyed the gameplay. The freedom and the choice that your character has. Arcanum is one of the best role playing games out there. I wish the execution was better because it is a flawed game, but as a role playing game, it's one of the best examples out there. But there is one thing that really cripples this game. Bugs. Arcanum is a buggy game. Even with the unofficial patch, it's still buggy. I consider myself a patient person and I can forgive a game if it's really buggy, but Arcanum tested my limits. Characters going through walls, characters getting stuck in cities. I had this one problem with Virgil where I was in Toronto and I would try to go down this one street and every time I went down the street, Virgil would get stuck and he would be unresponsive. I couldn't click on him, I couldn't talk to him, he would just stand there and I had to reload a save. That was so annoying. But the crashes, Arcanum crashed so much on me, it was ridiculous. In the beginning, I didn't notice it that much. But near the end, the game crashed so much, I almost gave up. Arcanum is a very buggy game. So if you play this game, just remember, even if you have the unofficial patch, expect bugs. And it's a damn shame. I wish Troika would have worked on this and not released the game in such a buggy state. They should have executed it better. I don't know why they made so many stupid choices. Overall, I enjoyed the gameplay. Yes, it has flaws and the game did frustrate me, but it's one of the best examples of a CRPG out there. Let's talk about sound and atmosphere. Arcanum really shines when it comes to sound and atmosphere. The soundtrack is excellent. You hear string instruments throughout the game and you can tell that this was recorded by professionals. It's just a very great soundtrack. I don't know what else to say. It's awesome. It sounds like it could be in a movie. It's that good. I recommend downloading the soundtrack. This game is really detailed, except for the dungeons. Other than that, there is a lot to see. You go to different islands, you go into the forest and see elven cities where they just want to stick to magic. You go through areas where they embrace technology. You go into underground cities. You go into a metropolis. You go into a city that's ruled by a monarchy. 
There is a lot to do and a lot to see, and this is one of Arcanum's strong points, the sound and atmosphere. Now overall, I really enjoyed Arcanum. There are flaws in this game. There are some stupid decisions that the developer made and I don't know why, but still, this is one of the best CRPGs I've ever played and I definitely recommend it, but if you play this game, you have to be patient and make sure you get the unofficial patch. Okay, now that I'm done with this review, I have to tell you something. If you don't know already, the next game I'm going to review is Fallout 4. That's right, a lot of you have been asking me to review Fallout 4 and I'm finally going to review it. That review will be out sometime in August and you better get ready because I have a lot to say. Have a great day.